Hello, and welcome to the third part of my Node.js for Frontend Developers series. In the last part, you were introduced to Express and routing in Express. In this part, you will learn about RESTful APIs, and we'll lay out the API we want to produce and decide on how we're going to store data to power this API. I've used many REST APIs in the past, even created some of my own, and yet I found it hard to come up with a concise definition of what they are to give to you. So I did some Googling, and here's what I came up with. REST APIs are web-based application programming interfaces that use HTTP requests to retrieve, create, and update data. Different HTTP methods, for example, get, post, put, delete, are used to communicate with the API. The REST part stands for Representational State Transfer. All this really means is that you use the correct type of HTTP request based on what you want to do. The API can be implemented in any programming language you want since the interface the user of the API programs to is just HTTP. So, for example, a GET request to slash user slash 123 would retrieve the details of the user with an ID of 123, whereas an HTTP delete request to the same URL would delete that user. This makes a lot of sense. This is basically where the formal standards for REST APIs begin and end. Beyond this, there is no exact specification on how REST should work, which does lead to many different implementations. These are some of the general rules of REST. Here, I give a request type, a sample URL, and what should happen when such a request is made. So a GET request to slash user should return a list of all users, or perhaps users filtered by a query string or pagination. A request to a GET request rather to slash user slash 1198 should return the user with the ID of 1198 or a 404 not found if it doesn't exist. A POST to slash user this would create a user with the data given in the request body, returning data for the user, including its ID. Um, so the request body would probably contain something like JSON representing a user in this case. And now there's a put request to slash user slash 1198. This should update the user with an ID of 1198 with information given in the request body, just like with the post, or create this user if it does not exist. Finally, a delete request to slash user slash 1198. As I'm sure you'll guess, the user with an ID of 1198 will be deleted if it's found. If it's not found, we get a 404. These are just general examples and nothing about HTTP will actually stop you straying from these guidelines, but it may make your API confusing to others. We're going to be building a Customer Relationship Management API. This will allow us to create companies and then create people that belong to those companies along with their contact details. On the screen now, you will see a brief overview listing all the endpoints and HTTP request types for them, but we will revisit this in the next video. I don't want to go through it in detail now. It's best to wait until we actually start building the thing in the next video, but you get the idea. We have endpoints that allow us to update companies and people for those companies. So these will be our data structures that get returned from the API. Firstly, the company. It's just got an ID, a name, and some timestamps. And then we have the person. ID, first name, last name, email, telephone number, the company ID to link it back to the company, and again, some timestamps. Again, you don't need to worry too much about these now. It'll be covered again in future videos when we actually build the API. 
obviously when we post an item to our API, it will have to be stored somewhere so it can later be retrieved with a get. Most commonly, this would be achieved using a database. Installing and working with a database, such as Mongo, is a whole topic in itself, and I really want to focus on the node side of things. For that reason, our API is just going to store things as variables in memory. This obviously isn't production ready, as it means we, when we restart the server, the memory will be wiped and all the data will be lost. But it will serve to teach you how to use Node and Express to build an API, so that's fine. I realized there wasn't anything in the way of coding in this video, but it was important to lay out the fundamentals of REST and what we're going to be building first. In the next video, I'll show you how to use Node to create the get, delete, put and post routes for a company. Make sure you subscribe and also click the bell shaped icon to make sure you get notified of my future videos as soon as they're released so you don't miss the rest of the series. Mailing list link is in the description so sign up for that and you will join over 1000 subscribers on there who get my regular emails about JavaScript and tech careers.